Welcome to Classic Banjo Lessons with me, Aaron Jonah Lewis. Today we're going to play Mountain Polka. All right. Now in this piece, there are two main um, things that I like to focus on. One is the double thumb or the thumb glide, where you do a rest stroke for the first note through the fourth string and rest on the third string. So the other thing is easy to ignore. It's the rest. What we want to do with the rest when it's marked is stop the strings from ringing. This gives us a little breath, a little space, uh, makes the music more interesting and more lively, um, gives us uh, the articulation, uh, the, the, the contrast between sound and not sound. So I'm really big on, on playing the rests. In other words, not making any sound when the rests are marked. So um, of course there are some dynamics marked as well. If we go through the roadmap, we have a first ending at the end of the second line. Uh, and then we go back to the second ending and then carry on through to the end. DC al fine means go back to the beginning up until where it says fine, or you know, in English it would say fine, but Italian means end, it's the end. So um, I'll play it for you um, at a uh, sort of performance tempo, a tempo di polka. Uh, you want to uh, imagine, you know, when you have a, uh, um, a dance form as the instruction, as the guide, you want to picture people dancing, and if you've never seen people dancing, well, you can look it up on YouTube. It's helpful. It's, it's nice to know. Uh, of course, polka is, is popular all over the world. Um, in this case, you know, mountain, you, I'm thinking like Switzerland or something, but I'm also thinking Midwest, which is not very mountainous, but I'm just my own imagination. So use your own imagination. You can picture any kind of polka you like. But this is a mountain polka by Frank Bradbury. I forgot to mention, when you come back around for a recap, you get through the, through the whole thing and you go to the DC, which means go back to the beginning, you always skip the first ending when you're doing that. Um, I also forgot to mention, when you're stopping the strings, there's two ways you can do it, and you may have noticed I was a little awkward with trying to show both ways. Um, one is with your right hand and the other is with your left hand. Uh, Personally, I prefer to use the left hand whenever possible because that's the hand that is already moving around. Just for me, just my own preference. With my right hand, I like to be ready to play the strings at all times. I like to be poised and in position. Um, but you can, you can always, you know, so we have our first, um, second bar. Our second bar here is our first string stopping. You can do that, but then you have to get ready right away. So for me, I like to can do that. And of course I have to go up here past the fifth string or else the fifth string is going to keep ringing. Which isn't the worst thing in the world. I'm, I'm kind of exaggerating to show you uh, <laughs> how far you can go with this, I guess. Um, you, you're going to still sound good if, you're, if your fifth string is still ringing. It's up to you. Uh, let's do Mountain Polka at a, at a slower tempo now. 
more of a practice tempo. Um, and I'll be honest with you, it's harder to get dynamics to come through at a slower tempo. So um, don't worry about it too much. Dynamics is the last thing that I would worry about when I'm learning a new piece. Uh, first, I go through and make sure I understand what's written. Uh, you know, sort of sight reading, taking my time, not worrying about, um, you know, maybe even just not even worrying about the rhythm at first, just making sure I know where my fingers are going to go, uh, the positions, and make sure I have the right notes, especially if there are any accidentals, uh, and then make sure I have the rhythms correct. Uh, then I just try to uh, basically, I, I tend to memorize as I go. I, obviously, I haven't memorized this, but uh, just take it real slow for a long time and then basically it'll sink in um, and then you can play it faster and think about accents and dynamics at that point. So let's go with Mountain Polka, first banjo part. So this is actually slower than what I already played so I want to just for practice sake I'm gonna go up to you know eighth notes at around a hundred so one and two and three and four and realize I've assumed that you know what the dynamic markings mean. F means forte and I like to compare dynamic markings to tones of voice. So the tone I'm using right now is forte. Uh, it's as if I'm talking to you and you're in another room, which I think you are. <laughs> so forte is, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to be very clear and strong with your expression. Very, very clear and strong bold even. Um, then when you see an M in front of the F, which uh, we don't actually have in this piece, but we did in the last piece, uh, that means mezzo forte, which means medium forte. So that's more like maybe you're sitting at the same table. You're, you're across the table uh, having dinner, maybe. Uh, so you, you don't have to talk as loud, but you, it's still, it's like, I'm, uh, I'm talking to you and we're, we're going to have a conversation and it's, you know, 
just kind of medium, right? Piano, now that's a bit quieter. I would compare that to sitting next to, to someone on the couch and, uh, and you, you really don't need to speak very loudly to, you're right next to the person, so it's more intimate. Um, so that's what I was doing in that uh, last two lines there, piano. And then crescendo and diminuendo, also known as decrescendo. So uh, crescendo is when it's, uh, you know, this, this kind of triangle, um, <laughs> or I guess like going this way. Wait, no, for me it's going this way. Is that the same for you? Okay, it's kind of obvious, going from small to big, and the opposite, big to small. So, that's our lesson for today. Keep on practicing, take your time, be patient with yourself, make a beautiful sound with your banjo, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.